to get across the two scary sections of river while there's daylight and while the weather's good, we think we need to set off at about seven or eight in the morning. <laughs> so naturally tonight, it's just gone half two in the morning because we were busy playing Stardew Valley with our friends. Bye night. <laughs> that we've found to cruising in the winter. And I don't know if people, other people just don't do it. When you have the fire on, particularly when you've just sort of put more coals on or something, reignited it, the smoke, when you're traveling, blows down this end and it goes all in your mouth and everything, and it's rather unpleasant. If any other boaters has any tips, let us know, because we hate it. <laughs> on these benches with my mom and we were like one day we'll be cruising past here in our boat here we are mom big moment for us. This is our first double lock. Every lock that we did in the hire boat was a double. So we should be fine. Should come back like riding a bike, right? <gasps> oh my gosh. It's huge. Our little boat's gonna look tiny in there. Forgot quite how long double locks take to fill though. Takes quite some time. Right, we think we're ready to go. We've got the center line around that. Wes is holding it. Ready? Good on this end? So. Not as scary as it seems. <laughs> small in here but look at the size of the gate that I'm gonna have to try and push It was so big, 
so scary. But it wasn't that bad, was it? It was all right. It was just treat it like a normal lock and take it very slow. That's what we did. Yeah. Driving. All by myself. It's our friends at Home Oak again. Not seen them since. Yeah. Langoflin. Here we go. <laughs> Drive by bins. I'm not close enough because I'm filming. This is for you, Pat and Sassy. Our first wide beam moored up. Amy's practicing some driving, and the freezer actually seems like it's getting cold. So I'm gonna put some ice cubes in her for so she can have them later. This lock is very full, but the previous boaters just went through it. So we're gonna, gonna see what happens. Just trying to get into the lock and all this stuff has emerged and drifted in. And it means we actually can't really get in. 
There's so much of it. Managed to get through it. Use the barge pole to just push it out of the way and then sneak through. This is Shardlow. It's very pretty. It's got a whole model railway around the, the garden. We're starting to get into river territory now. And we've come across a red light. What does it mean? Why wouldn't they put it closer? I can't see it. When red light shows, it is not recommended <gasps> for craft to proceed beyond this point. No! What? We've rushed all this way! I don't really know what to do now, so I'm going to try ringing the number and see what they say. So we've tried the two phone numbers on the sign. One of them, the office is shut until Monday, so two days. And the other one doesn't work. It's not a real number. That's fun. It's taken us five hours to get here and we got it before the sun. So this is kind of frustrating and also there's nowhere else for us to turn or more. We're going through and we've checked the website and the website's green. That's got the red light, obviously and the floodgates are open and the level looks okay on the gates so what we're going to do is we're just going to more go forward and usually there's an indicator on the actual lock just before you get to it which is probably more accurate because it's actually the water level so we're going to try and get closer to the river and then if not we can just moor up just before or just panic and reverse it all the way back because it says you can go through onto the river saw which is fine um, we just not on the trend, but we can't find that river on the map, so who knows what's happening. We'll see. I'm scared. So, we've checked on the website, it says normal on the CRT. We've checked on the river trend, like water levels at Shardlow, that's also normal. Everything says that it's normal and green and fine. But it's just said that the, like, the, f the fact that the floodgates had red do not proceed. So, I mean, sometimes it can be as silly as like, oh yeah, they've been broken for months and they just don't tell you. And it's like, we've had that before. Yeah, someone will be like, oh yeah, just ignore them. No one, no one pays attention to them. But it's like, do we trust that or not? We, we can see other boats moored up on the path side. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go behind them and just stick with the other boats and have a walk have a walk forward, see what it's looking like. And if we have to stay here for the night, so be it. The last bridge on the trend at Mersey. We're almost done on the trend at Mersey. Number one. Number one of the trend. So we're just about to moor up. So stressful. I went and down and had a look at the indicator levels, the red, yellow and green. But the bottom of it snapped off um so it was only red and then it had snapped in half and the water wasn't on red but we don't know whether it's yellow or green and it's just a whole thing but our saving graces there's another little boat coming so we're gonna ask them like whether they're going on it what they think and we're gonna go with them if it's okay so we're just gonna moor up a little bit go and have a look on the lock and ask them questions so yeah, oh my, it's so stressful. Rivers so far, not a fan. So we asked them, they said, it's green on the website, they've also checked, and the level on the gate looks fine. So it looks like, we just said we're gonna come through with you. And there was an experienced boat with them and they said, yeah, we're gonna go for it. So we're gonna go with them. They're also quite new. There's two of them that are new, one of them that's experienced. pretty stressful now because a river cruise has just gone past and told us the floodgates onto the Sawley Lock are shut and you can't get through but then but then the other guy said there isn't any <laughs> <laughs> so 
Oh, I want to cry. Now there's another narrowboat coming, so we're going to go and wave at them and say, where have you come from? This is like, yeah, rivers are so much more stressful I than I hate canals. rivers. Okay, <laughs> these people on this lovely boat, so much better. They were just like, yep, you can get to the Sawley Court, you just can't get any further, which is fine. We just want to get back on the canal because the Sawley Court is a canal in between two bits of river. So we asked him about the river flow. He said, it's absolutely fine. It's green, normal. Yeah, not too turbulent, should be fine going down it. And they've just come from the Sawley Cut, so they know that you can get through it. It's just the red light at the top means you can't go all the way through. To Nottingham? Some of the way through. Which well, is it's so like, why isn't that clear? Because the thing is, as well, like one boater tells you one thing. Yeah. Not that it's like their fault that they're getting it wrong or anything, but like one boat will tell you one thing, and then we've the CRT website is telling you another, and then someone else just came and told us something completely the different. Is though, is that it, it does all, they all make sense. Like the, the yeah. floodgates of Sawley are closed, but on the far side, yeah. so you can get through. But when they said, oh no, you just turn around, in a river cruiser you can turn around anywhere, in a narrow boat you can't. But anyway, we're going on to the Trent now. So here it is, this is the big bit. So. We're going under that bridge. Under the Grey Bridge, yeah. So far, so good. Just feels normal. I feel so much better now we've seen that other boat.
We are absolutely exhausted. It's half three now. We set off at half seven, which means we've been going for seven hours. And on top of that, just how exhausting it has been mentally as well. So we've moored up now. We're on the Sorley Cut. Sorley Cut. And we're just nice. gonna just gonna wander around. I don't think there's much daylight and I think the flood locks are closed going forward, so probably gonna stay here overnight and just recuperate and nap. <laughs> but first we've got to take Rufus out because obviously he's the top priority as you can hear. After all that, the light's green for the River Trent. <laughs> Green, basically, isn't it? That's at the top of green, isn't it? I'm so done with just rivers. <laughs> We've never used one of these before, so we're just checking it out. But the cafe behind us is really busy. I feel like it wouldn't let me do it if it was if they were locked, right? Yeah. We are absolutely exhausted. The forecast for tomorrow looks like it's pretty clear. So the river shouldn't get worse. So that's the plan, recuperate today, go tomorrow. Just doing a bit of exploring before we go back to the boat. I believe this is where trains go. How would you rate your river experience so far, Amy? See, now I'm just confused because it's red. I mean, it's green. Everything's fine. It was really fine on the river. Everything was okay. It's very calm. Very calm. So I feel like we've been stressing all day for nothing. But it was just that one red light. Yeah, threw the whole threw thing the off. the whole day off and made us really stressed. And it didn't even mean anything. It's definitely a huge learning curve about boating that when you know something, it, it's pretty easy to kind of get by with and like just feel like you're confident and you understand it all but when you're new you read into everything so much yeah that yeah literally one red light can throw your whole day off your whole plan off because it's just terrifying so we've got to this sign and as you can see the river saw which didn't have the red light was is past where we needed to turn off anyway. So we think that red light from ages ago meant the River Trent like all the way past the Earwash, all the way up to Sheffield and stuff. But why would they put it so far back? Why wouldn't they do it by section? Yeah. We're like, oh, there's a light for the Sawley Cut and the Earwash. So this is the sort of angle. You have to come all the way out here and then turn quite sharply to get in here. But there is a lot of room. It's very wide as well. We're back after about an hour and a half-ish walk. About seven and a half to eight hours of cruising. About four hours sleep. We're all settled now, but Thanks to Wes, I got some ice. This is my favorite ice thing. And you just put it in, you get tiny little cubes. And I literally just crunch. Ice! It's bright and early this morning. It's really foggy but the weather so far has stayed pretty calm. So we're gonna make a quick run to the facilities just before the locks, and then it's river time. The Sawley Cut's been really nice. I'd stay here for a little bit longer. There's a nice little cafe and a pub. Um, and yeah, it's really good. So I've just walked ahead. The lock's definitely still open. The river's on green. The indicator is well below the red and even below the yellow, which means that we're in green. We're good to go on in terms of the water level 
The only thing is there is quite a lot of fog on the trend. There's still some fog here, but it's worse on the trend. We sent a picture, asked a couple of other boaters on the Facebook page, and they said that it should be fine. Hiya. Um, it's only a 20 minute journey. We should be absolutely fine. Just take it slow and turn our light on. Um, so that's what we're gonna do because a couple of them said it's better to be on the ear wash um, than to risk being stuck behind a flood because the Trent floods and when it does flood, it floods for days on end. So if we don't go now, basically there is a risk that we might get stuck here. So we're gonna go for it. Life jackets on! Turn. This bit's a little bit scary because you have to go sideways to the current. But let's just see. Worst case scenario, we we'll go past it and then turn around and come back if I mess it up. Really put off because behind us when we were trying to turn there's this big like horn alarm sound that kept going off. No idea what it was for. But it was really off putting, it kept throwing me off and then I lost concentration and banged the front. pushed over to the other side because this happens to be one of the locks where the sluice gate paddle opens the opposite side. Great. Positive out of the craziness. New toy for Rufus. Yeah, that was a pretty big hit. 
time to check out what's happened inside because it sounded like a fair few things had moved. A spice rack held up, apart from the bigger jars. You seem okay though. I think kind of thing's broken. Looks like our eco fans have taken a tumble. One of them was already worse for wear. Roof says water bowls spilled a bit. Well, that's fine. This picture's come down. Thankfully the mug full of tea hasn't budged. Because <laughs> that would have gone all over our TV stuff and switched on the sockets. Some catastrophic damage in the bedroom. Uh, a leg from a pair of joggers has escaped. Amy's tin of bubbles and hair grips is down there though, so that's a bit annoying. And Duke hasn't noticed anything has happened. Even though he was right where the collision was. It looks like the damage is pretty minimal. The boat itself is fine as well. So it was quite a hard bump, but a good stress test of our setup, and it, it all seems all right. Worst bit about the crash though, it's made all these dirty parts. These were all completely clean in a way, and now they've, now they need washing and our lettuce has gone off because of the impact. Right, we've recuperated. We've got some crisps out. Amy's got the kettle on. We've had five minutes, we've done the water, we've had a little tidy of the kitchen and picked up everything that's fallen over. And now it's just a chilled cruise, back to normal, back to the canals, find a nice spot to moor up in, potentially for a couple of weeks. But the first time we see a spot that we like, we're just gonna moor up there and settle down. <laughs> Our brains are so frazzled though. I randomly picked up my wallet and just put it in my pocket. I don't know why, but I've only just realized it's in there. When we got off of the river, just straight after the crash, and we came up to the lock, it's Trent Lock, it's just the lock that separates the river from the canal. And I just looked at it and I was just like, I was so like panicked and like, my heart was beating still from the crash that I was just like, I don't know what to do. I've never done a lock before in my life. <laughs> <laughs> How do locks work, please? Ugh. And I just couldn't think. That that shook us up. That caught us off guard. Like yeah. we were as prepared as we could be, but still did not like that. Thank you so much for coming with us on our scariest cruise yet. If you enjoyed the episode, remember to like and subscribe and follow us on our socials at Boat Time UK. And congratulations to Ruri for comment of the week.